We are honored to be joined by Dr. Denise Rogers, who's Vice Chancellor at Rutgers University in the area of? Interprofessional programs. You're also one of the smartest, most impactful physician leaders that, that I've ever spoken to, particularly on the subject of what is being called trauma-informed care. Talk about it, doctor. Okay. So we have increasingly learned over the last 20 plus years the impact of trauma on child development and subsequently on the health of adults. And we're now increasingly interested then in understanding less of what's wrong with you and more of what has happened to you. For example? So for example, we know that adults who in childhood experience six or more adverse events will have a life expectancy that's 20 years less than the average life expectancy. OK, adverse childhood experiences, otherwise known as ACEs. Otherwise known okay. as ACEs. <clears throat> and By the way, excuse me, check out NJTV, side will be up. Uh, our good friend Michael Hill, who we just, we had a conversation with him, did a five-part series on this topic. Check it out. I'm sorry. Yes. And so um, one of the things that we know about ACEs that include things like physical, emotional, sexual abuse, physical and emotional neglect, having a parent with a mental illness, having a parent with a substance use disorder, having an incarcerated parent, having parents who've had very difficult divorce. Children who are exposed to these things then have difficulty often as they're growing up with emotional regulation, sometimes with learning, mm -hmm. because they grow up in this heightened sense of stress. They never know what's coming next. And because of the physiologic effects on children, as they get older, oftentimes they'll self-medicate. So they smoke, or they drink, or they may use drugs, or they may eat. Mm -hmm. And what that leads to then are increased rates of heart disease, cancer, but also we see higher rates of suicide, higher rates of depression, substance use, that sort of thing. Along, this, along these lines, doctor, and we'll put up the, our right from the start, NJ, we have an ongoing uh, initiative where we're trying to deal with uh, the needs of infants and toddlers, mm -hmm. okay, and mm -hmm. those who care for them. Mm -hmm. These adverse childhood experiences, do they, can they in fact happen from zero to three? Absolutely, they can happen from zero to three. Imagine it, I mean, that first, several years are the periods when it's most critical for, for children to be nurtured by their parents. If they're neglected, if they're not cuddled and talked to and held, that has a psychological and physiological adverse effect on these children. Absolutely, this, this, can, this adversity can occur from birth. Dr. Rogers, what do we, by the way, we're speaking to Dr. Denise Rogers, uh, Vice Chancellor of Rutgers University. Um, what do we need to do from a public policy point of view. I mean, State of Affairs focuses less on politics, more on policy. What do we need to do? We need to have a two-pronged approach. The first prong is we need to mm -hmm. try to prevent children from experiencing adversity as much can as we? we can. Absolutely we can. We can do it through education, education of parents. We can do it through education of teachers and the systems that children interact with so that when children are acting out, particularly traumatized children, mm -hmm. rather than necessarily taking a punitive approach and further traumatizing them, we can actually be more nurturing of them. We can help them to learn to emotionally self-regulate rather than moving toward spanking, for example, which just further traumatizes the children. But the second part of our approach has got to be dealing with the adults. So we have to create services for adults who've had adversity in their lives so that they can become healed, if you will. You know, what's interesting to me about this. Um, there are some who when they've heard this whole concept of uh, ACEs, adverse childhood experiences, let's say, look, who hasn't had a mm -hmm. tough childhood? And the numbers are, are astronomical in mm -hmm. terms of out of every 10. Uh, well, put it this way. I think, there are, uh, I think there are 10 indicators that we look for, and a high percentage of people have had five or more. That's right. So people say, oh, many of us watching right now, some may say, well, come on, just get tough. Tough it out. Not that simple. Toughing it out doesn't work. The, the other thing is, so the numbers look like this. We probably, about 30 to 40 percent of kids have experienced one adverse childhood experience, right? So the numbers get smaller. I mean, we really don't have as many children experiencing multiple adversities because these are pretty serious adversities we're talking about. Let me interrupt you. We're, yeah. right, we're in Newark right now. Yeah. Eight-year-old child, right. and our daughter happens to be eight. That's why the number right. hit me. Right. Eight-year-old little boy, little girl. Yeah. Central Ward, South Ward of Newark. Right. West Ward of Newark. Yeah. 
he or she could be facing what as it relates to this that is just traumatizing on so many levels? Well, you're, you're raising two very interesting and important points, Steve. The first is ACEs are disproportionately affecting children of color. So about 50% of Hispanic kids and 60% of black kids have one or more ACE. And white okay? kids? White kids, about 40%. Okay. Asian kids, about 25%. Okay. The second thing, though, is the American Academy of Pediatrics has clearly declared poverty in and of itself is an adverse experience. So just out of the box, no matter what's going on in the home, if a child is living in a community that's affected by poverty, they're having that one ACE. Very often, think about the incarceration rates that we see, right? Think about the rates of substance use that we see in the community. So it's very easy for these kids in inner city Newark to be experiencing multiple ACEs wow. and experiencing the, then the adverse effects of them. Real quick on this. Uh, actually, I first heard you speak about this at a, um, at a Newark Community Advisory Board Forum that we mm -hmm. had at, at Newark Beth Israel Medical Center. And one of the things that strikes me is that the, the topic of um, social determinants of health come up comes right. up a lot. Right. Could you, in layperson's language, Dr. Right. Rogers, which you're so good at doing, explain what that means and why it's relevant to this larger discussion? Right. So social determinants of health are really those things outside of the medical system. They're like, what community do you live in? What kind of job do you have or not? What is the uh, availability of fresh fruits and vegetables? in your community. How about transportation right? or lack thereof? Exactly. Can't get there. You, that's exactly right. These are the things. And what have we discovered? We've discovered that these social determinants are more impactful on a person's health outcomes than what I do as a physician in the office. But hold on. We look to physicians right. to heal us. And you are saying? That's right. I am saying that if we don't find a better way to heal our communities and our families and our social structures, we will not be successful in healing individuals to the extent to which we need to. Final question. While more awareness is uh, important, and that's what we are uh, about here, are there any policy changes, or at least one that you can mention, that would not fix but help? Yes. So um, the mayor of Newark has included in his policies moving forward to have Newark eventually become a trauma-informed city. A trauma-informed city, real quick on that, that means? That means that we're going to train police officers and school teachers and those working in social services agencies about trauma so that they're better able to deal with their clientele who've been traumatized, but also they're better able to deal with their own trauma. So it's interesting, you've got several healthcare organizations here, but you're saying everyone else needs to be involved in this. Absolutely. Dr. Denise Rogers is Vice Chancellor at Rutgers University. Um, working every day, not just to help and heal people, but to talk about the important public policy issues beyond just what physicians do, but all of our responsibilities. As always, I learned from you. Thank you, doctor. Thank you. This is State of Affairs. I'm Steve Adubato. We'll be right back right after this. State of Affairs with Steve Adubato is a production of the Caucus Educational Corporation, celebrating over 30 years of broadcast excellence. State of Affairs with Steve Adubato is brought to you from the Agnes Veris NJTV studio at 2 Gateway. Funding has been provided by RWJ Barnabas Health, Horizon Blue Cross Blue Shield of New Jersey, NJM Insurance Group, the New Jersey Economic Development Authority, the Healthcare Foundation of New Jersey, Choose New Jersey, and by NJIT.